bless America, and welcome to the Jazz McKay Show, right here on the big old Twitch. How you guys doing this fine Tuesday afternoon? Hello, hello to everyone. Hey, yeah, all uh, all folks, I I uh, I want to welcome you to the to the big podcast this afternoon. And we got a lot of things to uh, talk about and to cover today. I got some video footage of Joe Biden that you're just going to go, what in the hell is he thinking? I've got the clip from Trump at St. John's Church yesterday in Washington, D.C. I've got a clip of Trump calling for the military Will he said the military will come out if we have a problem dealing with the rioters? And speaking of the rioters, we have a clip of a sheriff, Grady Judd from Florida. I love this guy, I love Donnie Youngblood, but I wouldn't mind having this guy as a sheriff too. Wait till you hear what he has to say with the way he intends to instruct his his uh, constituents in Polk County, Florida, in how they should handle rioters if they show up at their front door. Also, uh, some other clips from various, um, uh, uh, various things, including Andrew Cuomo. I got a clip from Andrew Cuomo in just a moment that I have to ask, is Andrew Cuomo smoking crack? That's, I'm, I'm, I'm asking a serious question here. Is Cuomo on crack? The governor of New York, is he smoking crack? Oh, my God. Um, but, uh, but first, I want to show you something here before I get to my first guest. Yes, we have a guest on the show. I know Sandra in the chat room has been telling me that we need to get some guests. I said, well, it's a little difficult to do unless they're live in my living room with me and I had an extra microphone because there's really, and because that's the only way, or I use Zoom or go to meeting or something like that, and then the other person that would be the guest would be also. Uh, uh, th- there's one other way to have a guest on this podcast. There's one other way to do it, and that is to have them on the phone and then just Put it on speaker and hold the phone up to the mic. And you know what? That's the ghetto way of doing it, but that's what we're going to do this afternoon. But first, let me see. I want to show you a picture uh, right here. Just hang on a second. And I want to show you a picture of a man. This is, I'm going to show you this picture now, right there. That is my friend Tommy Anderson. Okay, take a good look at that picture of Tommy. Tommy doesn't normally look like that with the the blood coming down his face with a big gash cut into his, just above his eye. He doesn't normally uh, look like that. Tommy is a, is a, is a, he's a, he's a nice guy. He's just an average Joe and he lives uh, here in Bakersfield. And Tommy had an altercation the other day. Uh, on Sunday, I believe it was. And we have on the phone with us this afternoon. Let's see if this works. <laughs> His wife, Jana. Jana, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. Now, can, can you folks get can, can everybody? Sandra? You're the one that wanted me to do do this. Sandra, can you hear can you hear Jana okay on the phone? Say something, Jana. Hello, hello, hello. Is uh, Sandra Sandra think that is that sound good? Does Jana uh, There is, there is. Yeah, no, yeah, everybody can hear it. I even have a, a it's all good, Sandra says. So here, let's put this uh let's let's I want to put this picture up here. This is, I'm trying to do things like real television people do. So here we have, there it is. There is uh, Jana Anderson with her, her husband, 
Tommy and uh, Tommy and uh, uh, and you. The, the, this is a, a this a, a picture from your Facebook page, Shanna. Just so you know. Okay. And it's you and your husband, Tommy. Now Sunday, something happened, and I want you to tell us about it. But let's go to the very beginning. This involves a truck, I believe, right? With a with a, with and a tow truck and a truck and a, and a motorcycle. So what what happened on Sunday? Start at the very very beginning. You guys um, were on the Harley, right? Well, first we started out in our truck, and we had a blowout a little after one on Robertson Airport, right there at the donut shop. Right. So my daughter came and got us. We came back to the house, got on the motorcycle to go back to the truck to call Geico to get a tow. So the tow truck finally gets there, and um, he loads it all up. And he's a very nice gentleman, very talkative, but as a female, I didn't want to get in the truck with him. You know, but very nice guy. So I told my husband, I'm just going to get on the back of the bike with you. Right. Which I shouldn't have been because I had had an epidural in my neck two days prior. Oh, dear. But he didn't know where he was going, so I said, just follow us. Yeah, and it's so, a short it's a short draw. I mean, you know. Yeah. That, yeah, that's what I was just going to say. You can imagine going from the donut shop right there straight up airport going north on airport because we were going to hit Norris. So by the time we get almost to Woodrow, two cars run the stop sign. I think it's called vinyl cutters or critters or something right there. And so they both flew through the stop sign and almost hit us on the bike. And so I threw up my arm and said, hey, we're on a bike here. You almost hit us. Right, sure. And no... I didn't say Gucci Goo, and I wasn't nice. I yelled it, but that's all I yelled. Now, did, yeah, did you? I was going to ask you, did you say anything else? Did you say, hey, no. fuckhead, hey, asshole, no. or, or any no. other no. Uh, ex- expletives? Just, hey, no. you almost hit us, no. right? And the, and the old Jana probably would have, but like I said, I had just got an epidural. And right. I'm a little bit taller than my husband, so the wind's blowing my head. So I'm holding my helmet because it hurt to be on the back of there. Sure, yeah. And so this, this black Kia, its little square car, was chasing another car. And the fellow was hanging out the passenger window already. And I said, hey, you almost hit us. We're on a bike here. And he turned and made eye contact with my husband, not even me. And they got into the turning lane to turn left on Woodrow by Carousel. And before that car could come to a complete stop, he flew out that window like a spider monkey and came directly to my husband and just started punching him in the face. Wait, wait, wait. So you're at the traffic light of Woodrow and Airport. For those of you that don't know, in Oildale, this is a major little, it's a, it's a, it's a major little thoroughfare into residential areas on either side, east and west of Airport. There's a carousel restaurant there. It's a little drive through And this is Sunday afternoon, this past Sunday, about one o'clock. And you 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 almost get hit by this guy. The tow truck dr- more like three thirty about that. Okay, this is about three. I got you. I got you. So it's about three thirty, but still, it's broad daylight, and the tow truck driver is the tow truck driver is driving behind you. Yes. Okay, and you're going straight, and this car just comes out of nowhere from a cross street, runs the stop sign, almost runs you over. You're on the back of Tommy's motorcycle. And, yes. and and Tommy didn't say anything, but you said, hey, you almost hit us. And you pull up to the traffic light at Woodrow. You're in the right lane. They're in the turn lane. And the guy inside of the, the little the, the car jumps out the window and starts. And, and, and so what happened? Now, he jumps out the window of the car and yes. starts wailing on Tommy. Yes. And Tommy hadn't even said anything at this point, right? No. Oh, okay. No. And I don't believe Tommy even seen him coming because he was looking straight. You know, because never on a bike do you, does anyone ever jump out, you know, and try to fight you for saying, hey, you almost hit us. 
No, I know. Yeah, I, I used to ride, and I, yeah, no, uh-uh, that doesn't happen. But uh, now let me ask you a question, okay? The the driver of the car, we know this, you told me, was a woman, right? Okay, the driver of the car is a woman, and the passenger who jumped out is a man. Now, Jenna, I have to ask you, uh, in, this, in these trying times in which we live, in these confusing times, in these unprecedented times, Jenna Anderson with us on the Jazz McKay Show on Twitch on the phone. Jenna, was, uh, what was the, how can I put this delicately, what was he the... Was he was black and white. The woman was white. Um, and he was a light-skinned black man, but... From my knowledge, his mom is white and his dad is black. Okay. Now, so it's a black guy. Jumps out of the car. Your husband, which we see on our screen, is a white man. You're a white woman. And what was said when the man jumped out of the car, when the black man jumped out of the car, what did he say? We didn't hit, we didn't almost hit you, but I'll hit you now. Or did, what did he say? What were the words that he He used? You have something to say, you white motherfucker? And then that's as soon as he that came out of his mouth, he started punching on my husband. And at least three times, he said, you white motherfucker. And those were the only racial slurs ever uh, that I ever even heard during the whole altercation. Okay, so, so, so Tommy gets punched and the, the black man is saying, you got a problem, you white motherfucker. You have something to say to you white motherfucker, yes. When I'm wow. the one that said, hey, you almost hit us here, and that was during moving, you know, they right. waited till they came to the stoplight. They barely stopped by the time he jumped out the window, so they were still wow. cruising. Man. Now, have you, so and, and have you and Tommy ever experienced anything quite like this before? Oh, no, no. We're getting old. My husband's <laughs> almost 50 years old. I got you. You know, I've calmed down in, in my old age, you know, um, but no, we have never been racist, never have said anything like that. My granddaughter's Hispanic. One of my best friends is married to a black man and has, you know, but I guess as a white person, we're not even allowed to say that, that I have black friends because then that says you're racist too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I've come to the, Jana, I've come to the conclusion that it's simply due to the fact that we're white. That's well, it. And now black. all yeah. white people are white supremacists. That's just, yeah. you know, all there is to it. And if you say you're not a racist, that's proof yeah. that you're a racist is when you say you're not a racist. Um, yeah. So so what happened? So he now the bike did uh, Tommy. Was he able to hold the bike up? He held it for the first three hits because I was on the back and I had just had a procedure done. So he was trying to hold the bike, but there was a car in front of us and the tow truck behind us there's really nowhere to go because the sidewalk was on the right and the gentleman was on the left hitting my husband in the face by the fourth hit the bike went over i got stuck underneath the motorcycle um and by that time i crawled out from underneath the bike i looked tommy was in a ball so i figured he was okay because he still had his helmet on and his glasses were on the sidewalk so no glass in face head is covered i pound on the uh, tow truck um passenger side and said help my husband because i was my eyesight was already blurry you know and then i looked up and the female of the in the black car had moved the car to the fight and then said she had a baby in the car and so by that time, at least five uh, passer buyers had stopped and tried to break up the fight. The girl was outside of the car yelling at me, come on, bitch, let's do it, come on. Wait a minute, I'm so ready. so wait a minute. So the woman yeah. is now trying to fight you? Yeah. Holy cow. But it already looked like she had been beaten up. From If you want to jump forward for one sec, I was told that he had already been wailing on her all day. No kidding. And they both were spun on something. You could tell, because we have nine children, Tommy and I, and you could just tell when someone just isn't right. They're youngsters. My, God, my, my oldest is, how old is Miranda? 26? 
Yeah, Tommy's right here on on FaceTime, so if you want to ask him something, I'm, he might be able to hear you. Um, so all I thought of was youngsters, we're parents, we're not out trying to fight. But then after all that, she kept, kept trying to pull me on, which I'm old. I'm not getting into a fight in the street, and all the little babies from the skate park are standing there watching. Oh, out that's, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, you got the skate park right there, Jana. Uh, uh, yes. You've got all of this going on. And uh, the tow truck driver is towing your husband's truck right behind you, right? What happened? What did he do? He finally, after my husband was on the ground, and he didn't get out till I pounded on the door to tell him to get out because I believe he was calling it in on his, his thingy. And then he came out, and he tried to separate them. The dude punched him to the ground, and then the tow truck driver got hit in the head, kicked in the head. And he was bleeding also, and he was a very large Hispanic man. Wow, the tow truck driver got hit too. I didn't even know that. Oh yeah. We're clicking. I'm 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 clicking through, looking at the pictures here. We're showing the pictures of Tommy's eye. Uh, How's how's is it? Yeah, I can see that. Is 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 it? Is he okay? I mean, uh, he is okay. You can't see any white of his eye. It's all blood. It's all bloodshot yeah i can see that here in this in this picture here now uh jenna did you call the police what what happened i I actually could not call 911 because right before the truck blowout we switched phone plans so we had two separate phones on us one could work one didn't work i didn't know which was which and everything was on the bike, and when the bike fell over, the box opened and everything flew. So we, I couldn't find anything. So I was telling people, hey, someone call 911. And then one of my ex-employees, Cindy, because I own a salon here in Oildale, mm-hmm. so, you know, that is closed now due to the pandemic and everything. But she came and she called my daughter. Okay. So now uh, the the fight has ensued. Uh, were there? You said there were kids in the skate park watching. Oh, yeah. Did oh, yeah. did any of them come over? Did any of them no. help? Was there anybody besides the tow truck driver? He gets kicked. He gets hit too. He's bleeding. Um, the there the, were a couple other gentlemen that did stop and they stayed and talked to the sheriff and they all have marks on their face also. They got hit as well. So you've got uh, at least uh, three, four people. And then you, of course, the bike fell on your leg. Tell me how your leg is. Oh, it's sore. My hip hurts because it was on there because I have de- degenerative discs in my back and arthritis really bad in my hips. And I have kidney cancer and all this other stuff. So it's like we were old people just riding the bike. <laughs> you were just minding your own business. Really? I mean... Yes, I said, hey, you almost hit us, but everybody does that. You know, you almost killed us. We have nine children, you know. Well, we well, let's, uh, so care. so I tell you what, I, I got to ask you what happened when the police, now did the police arrive, did they catch them? Okay, so after the beat down and everything and like five people got involved, passerbyers that we don't know, they, uh, someone said the cops are coming, uh, Jar, Jar One, I don't know how to say his name. His name is J A R O N E Green. That is the perpetrator. He jumped back in the car with her. She was driving. They turned right on Woodrow. 30 seconds later, they came back up Woodrow, and now he's driving, and no one can see her. I don't know if she was in the car. I believe she was, but. They took off, so the cops had to chase them. So at least five highway patrols were there. Wow. A couple sheriffs. They found him on Roberts and Sequoia right there by that gas station. Sure, yeah, I know exactly where that is. Yeah, okay. And they took my husband to ID him, and so my husband was stuck in the back of the cop car like a bad guy while the girl was also in a cop car with the door open. So by the time I got there to pick up my husband, because someone had to be there to pick him up, you know, she's like, what's your name? What's your name? Who are you? Why are you looking at me? 
and I was just trying to do the mental picture because I can't see very far. And I'm just looking at her, not saying anything. And I'm looking at her, trying to remember her face, you know. And I had my friend take a picture of her, and she goes, don't take my picture. And that's the picture you see where she's holding the door, trying to close it over so that way we couldn't take a picture of her. Now, let me let me go over here to um, Facebook, and you have, because you have a, a, a bunch of stuff here. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a pic. It's pretty small. I don't think my viewers can see it, but yeah, this picture right here, folks, is, uh, is the picture in which, what you're talking about. Um, I have a screenshot of her Facebook on there somewhere too, of her. Yeah. Well, yeah, cause, cause, uh, this woman, then she goes on Facebook. Is that right? And she starts uh, calling you and Tommy racists. And we were hitting her car with a pole. How do you have a pole on your motorcycle? I'm let, not understanding that. Okay, now. And why would you back your car up into the fight if your baby's in there and then get on Facebook saying they're try, the racists are trying to attack us because my old man's black? <laughs> that's what she I, I, said because her yes. her uh, a boyfriend, I guess, right, is. Uh, yeah, he's mixed. He's a black guy. And uh, yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. I just found a picture of. Uh, there we go. That's her right there, um, and that's and that's him. Wait a minute, that guy, but that's a big dude. Yeah, <laughs> he's. This is him right here, folks. That's a that's a good sized guy there with the. Uh, okay, and there's the car. There's the vehicle. I'm seeing that. That they got to drive away in and park it at their house. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look here. I'm going to pull this picture up. And uh, this, okay, this, this is her post. And she says, as some of you may see me in, and my BD, I don't know baby what that, daddy. oh, baby, baby dad. dad. See, this is how unhip I am. BD is, is her baby daddy. As, as some of you may see me and my baby daddy in the back of cop cars and a racist bitch ranting about us on Facebook, that would be you. Yes, and you've seen my post. Yeah, we... I, wasn't, no, I didn't make it any no. racial, and I actually called him a gentleman, a young man. Um, things like that. Jana, you don't have to. You know, you don't. You don't have to clarify any of this. Stop it, because uh, this. this I, I'm sick of this. We as white people do not. We, there's no damn reason in the world why we have to go through these o- uber explanations that we're not racist and we didn't. I'm sick of that crap. Uh, she goes on to say, we had grown white men in capital letters in Oildale calling us in words and shoving poles into my car while my baby girl was in the back seat maybe my baby daddy meanwhile my baby daddy is fighting the racist then here comes three more of them but guess who was in the back of the cop car not them that's for sure white privilege is white privilege is real and it's happening every day open your eyes this is a time of empowerment if you can't respect everyone's skin color don't expect us to respect ya face ya face and all that's in capital letters so this is undoubtedly this woman and i'm assuming her baby daddy as well are inspired by the Antifa and Black Lives Matter movement and all of the protests slash riots that are currently going on, and they are emboldened to beat up your husband, Tommy, my friend, because he's a white motherfucker. And he just, that man just got back the day before from L.A. doing looting from what I heard from the girlfriend's sister's best friend. The girlfriend uh, who is in the back of the police car, yes. her best, best fr- friend said yeah, he, totally. okay, so he just returned from a looting vacation in Los Angeles, the guy that yes. beat up Tommy. Yes, and it's all on Facebook, so it's not like I'm making it up. Wow, so they even admitted they were down looting in L.A. 
All right. I now, uh, I got to I got to ask you this. I got to ask you the police. You're the, where, where uh, she's in the back of the police car. The the baby daddy who wailed on Tommy. He's and he's yeah. a good sized guy. Tommy's not a small dude either, but no, but but this guy's a good sized guy. He, much younger than Tommy, and he's beating on yeah. Tommy, calling him a white motherfucker. I just got back from beating up people in L.A. and looting stores, and now I'm going to beat your ass, you white motherfucker. And, well, you uh, didn't say that, but yes, that's what we Well, but yeah, okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm putting words in the poor, poor man, well, the poor baby daddy's I mouth. I am a business owner in Oildale. I um, help out the community. I don't know if you remember the story of the lady that got her throat slit open. I think her name was Carrie, and she was left for dead. My salon is the one that gave her a makeover to, when they made over her house and everything. My salon was the one that did that, you know. Tell, we, tell everybody, Jana, tell everybody, your, what's the name of your salon? Well, it is no longer open, but it was Color Me Crazy Salon on Norris. I know that and, place, yeah. Yeah. Are you going to, are you, go, are you going to reopen? Are you going to be able to reopen? I'm not going to reopen due to the fact I have kidney cancer. I understand. And so I have to take care of myself. And we have an eight-year-old that we have guardianship that is my nephew. So, okay. you know, I, I have to focus on him. Well, uh, Jana, we're praying for you for the uh, to recover from, from the cancer. But what did the cops say? Did they arrest this guy? No. No. They said it is only a misdemeanor because they did not see it. And um, they refused to give us any insurance information or contact information to them for destroying our bike. She went on to say on Facebook to me that my car didn't hit your bike. And I said, no. You never didn't. said that. You never said that. And I never said that. But, you know, we have so much damage to the bike, you know, that we already called it into the insurance. But we're going to end up having to pay our deductible and everything else. But the cop did say that we'll have to wait for the DA to call us to pick it up because of Newsom saying no arrests on misdemeanors due to the pandemic and something about a no bail thing. But the sheriff didn't even really help us. It was the highway patrols that really talked to us because I asked, why can't I do a citizen's arrest? Nope, can't do that either. So where are my rights at? Great question. So, now, uh, 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 so the highway patrol, the sheriff's deputies did not uh, give you any satisfaction. Highway patrol told you that uh, they would that they, they suggest you contact the DA's office. Yes. What uh, have you have you made contact with our district no, attorney? Told- we had to wait a week to two weeks before it even made it to their office. Yeah, now that's true, actually, unfortunately. Yeah. Wow. But I'm just gathering all the information, like she posted on Facebook, that, um, yeah, we he kicked his ass, and I'm so proud. And so I screenshotted that, that they're happy that they beat up an almost 50-year-old man. And I, at that time, I go, it's fine. I have enough for the DA just from this right here. And that's when she deactivated her Facebook. Yeah, I, I was. On, I uh, someone informed me yesterday that the perpetrator's uh, baby mama had uh, taken down her Facebook page, probably on advice from uh, uh, legal representation that they have. Who's- Actually, it, she only. It was already deactivated. She reactivated it because. People were telling her what I was posting and recognized them. So then she reactivated her Facebook. To incriminate, to incriminate her baby yes. daddy and herself. Yes. These people are not the yes. brightest bulbs in the box, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Unbelievable. Question from the question from the chat room before I let you go. Okay. Do you, because of the kidney cancer, do you have a GoFundMe page? No, I do not. Um, and I had to put all my kidney stuff on hold due to the pandemic. They stopped I know. everything. I was supposed to have my left kidney taken out, but everything was stopped due to the pandemic. 
Oh, dear and God. you don't get arrested for the pandemic, and you get to die of cancer. I mean, it's just a whole shit storm. I hear I, you. I I'm not understanding. <laughs> um, God bless you. I, I you listen. If anybody out there knows, uh, listen. Let's maybe we can get a, a, a GoFundMe page for you, Jana. I think we should. I think I think we should. Listen. Uh, you you've you've got my phone number. I've got yours. Yeah. So let's stay in touch. Tell Tommy uh, uh, that... You that tell him. He's right here. Tommy, we love He's you, brother. Did you hear? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tommy, God bless you, man. Let's get together and have... Uh, when, 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 uh, when we can, let's get together and uh, have a cup of coffee and a slice of pie over here at Milt's, all right? All right. All That's right. Good. And um, can you do me a favor? Send me a link to be able to, I don't know anything about these podcast things. Sure, yeah. Uh, and uh, people want to hear it, and I don't know how to get to it. <laughs> it's, it's real easy, all right? And I'm glad you brought it up because uh, now I don't have to sound all sanctimonious bringing it up myself. Go to, are you ready? Uh, no, can you just send me the link? <laughs> Yeah, I, I can. No, I can. I can send you the link. I. I, I can. Okay. But uh, for 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 the benefit of everyone else, uh, it is Twitch T W I T C H dot TV, and just type in the Jazz McKay Show, all one word, the Jazz Jazz McKay Show, and hit follow. And Jenna, before we even get uh, done with the show this afternoon, you and your friends can, uh, uh, you, you'll be able to find it. Okay. okay Twitch.tv slash The Jazz McKay Show should take you straight there. Twitch.tv slash The Jazz McKay Show. And uh, we, need, uh, we need followers and we want people to follow us, subscribe to us. We're, uh, right. we're brand new. Yesterday was the official first day, very first broadcast. So. Okay, yeah, I'll spread that around and uh, get you some followers. And I will send you a link in just a few few seconds, okay? All right, thank you so God much. God bless you and take care. And, uh, and Jenna, give, give, uh, give old Tommy a big old hug from me, will you? All right, I will. <laughs> take care, sweetie. All right. Bye-bye. There you have it, folks. This is just a little snapshot. Just a little snapshot of what <clears throat> what's going on as a result. Very sad story, um, but just a snapshot of what's happening all over the country. This is just one local story here involving some people that uh, that I that I that I know, Jenna and and Tommy Anderson. You may know them as well. They're good people. There's not a racist bone in Tommy or Jenna's body. Yeah, he rides a Harley. Yeah, he's got a beard. And yeah, he's white. That makes him a bad guy to an awful lot of folks out there. But guess what? Yours truly, I don't ride the Harley, but I got a beard and I'm white. This is what's happening, though. This is what's happening. It, 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 it's, it's sad. But with the empowerment that is given to the far left today, the word white supremacist doesn't even, you know, they use this term white supremacist. And I got to tell you, it doesn't, does it mean anything anymore? You know this story of, of, uh, of uh, the boy that cried wolf. Remember the story of the boy that cried wolf? Of course you do. The boy cried wolf just to get attention from all the villagers. The boy would be out. He would be tending the sheep in the meadow. And he was bored. So the little boy cried, wolf, wolf, wolf. And the villagers all come running. And he's laughing. There's no wolf. Ha ha, I fooled you. I fooled you. Ha ha. They went home the next day. Wolf, wolf. And all the villagers run to the meadow where the boy is crying wolf. And they discovered the boy laying on the ground, rolling in laughter. Oh, thanks for coming. I just was, I wanted you all to be here. I'm just bored. And eventually, 
a wolf shows up. And the boy cries, wolf, wolf, wolf. And nobody came. Remember that? That's one of my favorite stories. The boy that cried wolf. That and the old lady that ate a fly. We don't know why she swallowed a fly. Perhaps she'll die. Those are two of my... Well, that way. And stone soup. I'm sorry. I'm getting off on a tangent here. But I was talking about the white supremacy. They continue, the left, to call all people white supremacists. I, I don't know if you happened to hear Rush yesterday. He appeared on the Charlemagne uh, the God Show or the Breakfast Club or whatever it's called. And these are reasonable people, I thought anyway, uh, on the Breakfast Club. And Rush Limbaugh was a guest. They, 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 he asked if he could be on the Breakfast Club with these, these guys. Charlemagne, very popular African American radio program, and and I I think relatively reasonable people, but they kept calling Rush a white supremacist. Everybody, and so what is the classification? I gotta I gotta ask you, what do you think? Uh, the criteria, I guess, is the uh, is is the is the is the right. What is the? I don't know about you, but when I think of white supremacy. I'm thinking of these, uh, you know, first thing comes to mind, and, and I don't know if this will mean anything. Sandra, does this mean anything? Sandra's in our chat room, Killer Whale, and I got uh, nine or ten people watching. Does the name P.W. Botha, P.W. Botha, does that mean anything to anybody? Does anybody remember, or am I just an old man, remembering P.W. Botha? P.W. Botha was the head of, of the government. He was the president of South Africa. And he, they had a policy in those days in South Africa, which was, you know, a British colony. And they had a policy up until the 1980s called apartheid. Apartheid. And these white people had rules and laws that they they had to abide by and the black folks had their rules and laws that they had to abide by and they were separate but not equal separate but not equal pw botha was the president of south africa at the time and uh, i would say that apartheid was a white supremacist policy a white supremacist policy. If if you were a white person living in South Africa and you wanted to leave your house, you just walked out your door, got your card, took off. If you were black in South Africa and you wanted to leave your home and you wanted to go somewhere, you had to apply for a pass. Anybody remember a Apartheid? There was much more to it than that. But that's just one example of what was taking place in South Africa with a, I don't know, with a, uh, you know, a form, if you will, of white supremacy. That was white supremacy. The Ku Klux Klan. You remember the Klan? I mean, the real Ku Klux Klan, not not this uh, not this Ku Klux Klan that uh, that 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 we keep uh, seeing and hearing referred to. You know, remember the Klan and the white supremacy in the South. Anybody? Anybody remember those days? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Anybody remember, uh, like I said, uh, the, 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 uh, the apartheid regime of P.W. Botha? In South Africa. How many of you remember South Africa? How many of you remember artists united against apartheid? Anybody? 